Hello. Safety is a complex concept. Together we will examine what safety actually means. We will discover three perspectives on safety that lead to three different approaches for implementing safety. Most technological sciences deal with tangible objects. Chemistry and biology handle molecules and components. Physics, mechanics and civil engineering study matter and materials. This reality allows people to easily share a common perspective on the elements involved as they are based on objective notions. Safety science, on the contrary, deals with abstract concepts like risk. Even if the consequences of accidents affect people in a concrete manner, safety remains a subjective notion. As a result, various perspectives on safety exist, as well as various approaches for addressing them. This video will highlight that variety and introduce three perspectives. We will start with the qualitative perspective. Then move on to the quantitative perspective. And finish up with the managerial perspective. How these perspectives are put into practice will be presented over the course of the modules. To introduce these various perspectives in a simple way, let's take a look at the framework they have in common. The horizontal axis represents the timeline. Firstly, at T0, we set an objective that has to be achieved in the future at T2. Secondly, to achieve this objective we define an action plan. The development of this action plan takes time. Its length is depicted by the interval from T0 to T1. Thirdly, the action plan is executed from T1 in order to achieve the objective in T2. The figure here shows that T2 is the specified deadline to achieve the objective. In certain circumstances, the objective must be continuously maintained. For instance, the objectives of maintaining people's health and the environmental quality are constant over time. Let me illustrate the previous diagram by an example from everyday life. At 10 past 8, I say, I have to be at my office at 9. To achieve this objective, several action plans are possible, drive my car, take my bike, take the tube or walk. At 20 past 8, I make a decision. I will drive my car. I start my trip and arrive at my office at 9. In this way my objective is achieved. For multiple reasons developed later on, random events may occur. For instance an unexpected engine failure. As a result, execution of the action plan is disrupted and the objective is not achieved. Here, my arrival is delayed. It is important to point out that the action plan is not in question. It is only the execution of the plan that is involved. Choosing to use the car is not being questioned. What is being questioned is the impossibility of arriving on time. So we are focusing on the events that have disrupted the rolling out of our action plan and have caused consequences regarding our objective. Within the scope of industrial safety, dreaded events are called accidents. Their consequences in accordance with the objectives are called harms. When the objective is the preservation of health, harms are called injuries. When the objective is the preservation of the environment, harms are called pollutions. The different perspectives on safety will be distinguished by the way the causes of accidents and the harms will be considered. Let us examine the first point of view called the qualitative perspective. The qualitative perspective assumes that effects on the proceedings of the action plan have causes and that when causes arise then effects inevitably occur. That means that if every effect has a cause, each cause, when it occurs, leads to an effect. In the same way, consequences regarding to the objectives are known and occur unavoidably. For these reasons, the qualitative perspective is also called deterministic perspective. Let me remind that in the field of industrial safety, our objective is to preserve people's health as well as environmental quality. Causes of accidents are called hazards. The presence of hazards inevitably lead to the occurrence of accidents. These accidents cause predetermined harms. For instance, electrical energy is a hazard. The contact with the human body provokes an accident called electrocution. 
the injuries due to electrocution are well known. Burns and cardiac arrest are two examples. The hazard study identifies the hazards, the resulting accidents and the harms caused to humans and the environment. To guarantee safety, these hazards have to be removed or their effects neutralized to avoid accidents. Let us now examine the second point of view called the quantitative perspective. Here again hazards may cause accidents leading to consequences such as injuries. However, from this perspective we allow a certain margin in achieving the objective. We predetermine an acceptable margin of consequences. For instance, in the air transport sector, aircraft manufacturers must prove that the probability of a crash is less than 10 to the power minus 9 per flight hour. So aviation authorities do not demand a zero crash level, even though aircraft manufacturers do everything possible to avoid crashes. Authorities demand that the frequency of such accidents has to be extremely low. They specify a quantified threshold that is an acceptable risk with regard to the consequences. With such a perspective, safety is defined as the freedom from unacceptable risk. This perspective calls for the definition of acceptability criteria of the risks affecting the execution of the action plan. When designing the action plan, the values of the risk acceptability criteria must be assessed to demonstrate that they are lower than the given threshold. For example when designing a new plant, the probability of an accident such as an explosion, and the severity of its consequences such as the number of fatalities, are assessed. The plant will be opened if and only if the estimated values are acceptable with regards to the maximum risk level defined by the regulation. One more time it is important to note that the safety management activities are carried out before T1. When the action plan is executed, the results comply with the acceptable margin. For instance, the frequency of accidents as well the severity of harms are lower than the acceptable values. This perspective is called quantitative because it assesses risk criteria. As the probability of an accident is one of the most frequently used criteria, this point of view is also called the probabilistic perspective. To conclude let us examine the last point of view called the managerial perspective. With the previous perspectives, safety is fully managed before T1. From the qualitative perspective, safety management activities aim to make the risk null. From the quantitative perspective, safety management activities aim to make the risk acceptable. So, we can say, when the action plan starts its execution at T1 that the future is under control. So these activities can be authorized. Nevertheless, this assertion may be wrong if uncertainties exist. For instance, the qualitative approach assumes that all hazards as well as all associated accidents and all harms have been identified and handled at T1. Furthermore it relies fully on the efficiency of the barriers put in place before T1 in order to avoid accidents. The quantitative approach assumes that the acceptability criteria such as the probability of an accident or the severity of its consequences have been correctly assessed. Unfortunately many uncertainties often exist at T1. For instance if an innovative process is introduced into a plant, the possible all circumstances leading to an accident are not known. As a result, unexpected accidents may occur in operation. They reveal our limited ability to control risks between T0 and T1. Here, even though uncertainties exist, everything must be done to control of the risks before T1. However, that is not enough. Management of the risks cannot be stopped at T1 when the action plan starts its execution. It must be pursued through to T2. In reality, uncertainties may affect execution of the action plan. These uncertainties are only acceptable at T1 insofar as safety management is extended thorough the whole execution. Continual process of safety management takes advantage of feedback when incidents occur. It also benefits when new information is available. This enables safety to be continuously improved by identifying new hazards, revealing new potential accidents, specifying the severity of their harms and refining our skills with regard to the efficiency of safety barriers.
the inclusion of uncertainty leads to a recent definition of risk as being the effect of uncertainty on the achievement of objectives. When the considered objective is the preservation of health, a new definition of safety can be formulated such as the acceptable effects of uncertainty on health preservation. Let's summarize this video. Firstly, we have highlighted three perspectives on safety, the qualitative perspective also called deterministic perspective, the quantitative perspective also called probabilistic perspective, and finally the managerial perspective. Each perspective will lead to a specific approach for ensuring safety. It is fundamental to understand that there is no one best perspective. In particular, the succession of each perspective introduced in this video does not describe a progression. A selection of the most appropriate perspective must be made according to the context. In fact, several perspectives could be considered jointly for different types of accidents. For example, let's take a look at a French industrial site. Safety at work falls within the qualitative perspective as no death is tolerable. The industrial accident involves the quantitative perspective as the regulation specifies a maximum probability for an accident combined with the maximum severity of its consequences. Uncertainties due to the complexity of the facility or innovative processes will certainly require considering a managerial perspective in order to take the precaution principle into account. The approaches, methods, models and tools used to implement safety management will depend on the chosen perspective. These will be introduced thorough the course, 